Hello and welcome to Mr Ridley's GCSE Engineering and this clip is about the exam revision topic for 2017 and this is personal electronic devices. Personal electronic devices. This year's exam theme is personal electronic devices and this illustration here shows the sheet which was released to centres and it just says use of technology, materials, manufacturing techniques and shows these images. So we're going to have a look at that now. Um, use of technology. So the technology we can look at for personal electronic devices might be injection moulding, press forming of thin mat materials or metals, soldering, rechargeable batteries, manufacturing methods and some materials and components. So that's what we're going to look at now. Um, most of these products, we just have a quick look at a disassembly of these products, and this is a phone. Phones and iPads, that kind of thing, are all fairly similar construction. And they have a um, frame made from either thermoplastic material here, or on higher end phones that are metals or alloys. And um, this houses a PCB and a battery, and at the front here is a touchscreen display. Okay, so that's just a basic breakdown of the technology. Uh, injection moulding. So we're going to look at injection moulding. Um, parts such as the main frame and back cover are generally manufactured by injection moulding. So here's, I think, a Samsung, and you can see this Kate, this frame here is injection moulded. You can see it does actually have just little thread inserts in there, and this um, part here is also injection moulded. Um, this process, injection moulding, is used to make complex 3D shapes such as toys, electronic product casings and kitchen equipment. The advantages are very complex forms can be produced, high volumes can be made and it can be um, available in a range of colours. The disadvantages are it's expensive to set up, so the initial manufacturing costs are high and some very complex forms are impossible. Um, the advantages of injection moulding, so as again looking at this case and we can show that there's varying thickness elements and reinforcements um, and there's lots of other details, webbing, um, holes and recesses that would not be possible with other processes like vacuum forming. So that's injection moulding. Um, injection moulding, we'll just look at a flow diagram, these are quite popular in the exam and the, uh, the processes for injection moulding, the plastic granules are fed in here into a hopper, the granules are heated and the screw thread turns here pushing um, pushing the molten plastic forward through a nozzle into a highly accurate split steel mould there's an illustration of it here and the plastic is injected under this and cools and then the mould opens and the object is ejected so there are the four stages of a flow diagram of injection moulding um, types of plastics, it's good to remember that these plastics most of the plastics used in these, these products, headphones, chargers, phones, are thermoplastics. And this means they can be melted and shaped over and over. They are good electrical in insulators and they normally have a good self-coloured surface finish, so a high quality surface finish. And of course the thermoplastics are generally easily recycled. High impact polystyrene. This is uh, used in injection moulding. It's uh, thermoplastic, it's easily recyclable, it's fairly tough, it has a high impact uh, strength, it won't bend, it's a good electrical in insulator and it's available in a wide, again in a wide range of colours, so that's HIPS. This plastic is ABS. Now ABS is a higher quality, so we can see this phone back here with a glossy finish is probably ABS. ABS is, no, is again a thermoplastic. It's tough and it's tougher than ABS. Um, it has a high impact strength. Again, it has a high quality finish, better finish than HIPS. It's available in numerous colours. It's more expensive than HIPS. It's scratch resistant. It's lightweight. It's durable and it has good resistance to chemicals. Um, so again, phone cases, a lot of the exterior cases are ABS. Now we're going to look at metal and here is a more high-end phone case and this is made from aluminium or an aluminium alloy. Um, this is a non-ferrous metal, it's lightweight, 
It is ductile, so it can be uh, easily shaped and stamped, drawn into thin wires. It's malleable, so it's easily cast. It is a good conductor of electricity. It has good corrosion resistance, but it is more expensive than the um, plastic type foams. Um, it is difficult to weld. Stainless steel. This is another um, material that's used. We can see the case of here is a, the, um, stainless steel. It is a ferrous metal. It is tough and hard wearing. It is malleable, so it can be press formed as this. This, is, um, this case here is press formed. It has good corrosion resistance and is expensive, but it gives a quality feel. So high end um, types of these products often use stainless steel because it is durable and hard wearing. And there we can see on the iPhone the stainless steel back. Some foam parts are made from alloys. An alloy is a mixture of at least two elements, where at least one of these is a metal. So, for example, brass is an alloy of copper and zinc. Obviously, if you mix carbon and oxygen, that's not an alloy because they're not metals. So they have to be, obviously, metals. So that is alloys. Why do they use alloys? Because alloys have properties that are superior to base metals. So they might cast better, or, for example, inside this jet engine, the metal parts are heated to very high temperatures, so they need to be alloys. So that's why alloys are important. But for our phone cases and things, it's because alloys give us a good, easily cast. We're going to look at soldering technique. Um, again, this may be in, in a flow diagram. So components are assembled onto printed circuit boards. So we've got here a sectional view. And we can see this is a printed circuit board. This is the leg of a component. And this is the copper strip. So we're just going to look at the process of soldering. So we place the component in position and touch the soldering iron onto the copper track. So the soldering iron comes down and touches on the track. It shouldn't touch on the leg of the component. There's the point of contact. And then we add the solder. Once the, the, the track here has been heated, we add the solder and touch that onto the copper track, not onto the leg. The solder that, that should then flow up onto the leg of the component to hold it in place and also to make a good electrical conduction. And the finished joint should be neat and have a smooth, shiny finish. So that is soldering. That is the process of soldering components onto a PCB. CNC milling. We can see here, again, a phone case that has been, you can see the, the, the tool paths here, it's been CNC milled. And we can see here another phone case being milled with a CNC milling machine. CNC milling, or computer numerically controlled milling, is done by milling machines controlled by computers. These machines can produce complex shapes in metals very accurately from CAD drawings. Cold pressing steel. Thin shield sheet steel can be pressed, forming dies and formers. So these are all um, components from an iPhone. And you can see they're made of thin um, steel, so maybe aluminium, and they're pressed by putting between two uh, formers and a, a, a force applied to shape them. Spot welding. This um, process, uh, two pieces of thin sheet steel are held between electrodes. Here, so you see the two pieces of steel here, and a current is passed through them. The steel is simultaneously heated, pressed them together, forming a welded joint. Lots of questions on metals in the last exam paper. Aluminium die casting. Um, here we can see our die cast phone case. This die casting is a similar process to injection molding. The molten metal is injected under pressure into a steel mold. So we can see quite similar. There's a hopper, but instead of a screw to drive it in, there's a plunger that pushes the molten metal into a mold, and then the mold, the metal cools and it's ejected. Very similar to injection molding, but aluminium or aluminium alloys are used to make die cast phone cases. Anodizing aluminium. This is a process. Aluminium alloys are anodized. This process gives the phone case, aluminium case, a tough, hard wearing coating. And it also means that a wide range of colours can be applied during anodizing. So it, it's a hard wearing coating, but also adds colour to aluminium. That is anodizing. 
technological advances. We're going to look at the technological advances that have improved these products and given them increased functionality for users. Now, I don't think they're going to go into these really technically, but it's, it's worth knowing what these improvements have come about, um, mainly due to materials and manufacturing processes. So we're just going to look at some of the things that have improved these projects, products over the last few years. Technological advances. Increased battery life. Improvements in battery technology, particularly to lithium-ion batteries, have increased the time between charges and the capacity of the products. Touchscreen technology. This allows a much more flexible user interface for the products. And cameras. Phone cameras are now able to record very high quality images. So these are all things that have improved these products in the last few years. Also, Bluetooth connectivity. Bluetooth connectivity allows users to connect and communicate with a range of other nearby devices, such as Bluetooth headphones, for example. That's Bluetooth technology. Touchscreens. The touchscreens are actually what they call mutual capacitance screens. So the latest ones on the iPods have um, three points of contact, which means documents can be opened and closed using finger movements. So these are touchscreens. Rechargeable batteries. Many personal electronic devices are now powered, powered by rechargeable batteries. These use lithium ion battery technology. Batteries like this can be recharged quickly and are small and lightweight. The average rechargeable battery can be recharged about a thousand times before it needs replaced. And this is improving all the time, the capacity of these batteries and the um, amount of charges they can take is improving. That is lithium ion batteries. Rechargeable batteries contain harmful metals, so should never be thrown away with daily rubbish. They should be returned to the manufacturer disposal for disposal or recycled elsewhere. And there is the Waste Electrical and Electronic Equipment Directive, this WE Directive, and this symbol here. You can see on the lithium ion battery there is a recycling symbol. So they're very important to recycle because they're very polluting if they go into um, landfill, for example. Personal electronic devices and their chargers have very complex electronics. The exam may ask about some of the more simple electronic components and their symbols. The electronic circuit components are drawn as symbols so they are easy to draw and are able to recognize all around the world. For the exam, you should be able to recognize these components and their symbols. You should have an idea of the function of each of these components. Speakers. As we've got an image of headphones, speakers are an electronic component that may feature in the exam. Speakers work by moving a diaphragm with electromagnets. This in turn moves air and creates sound waves. So here's a sectional view of the, the speaker with a magnet and the diaphragm. And here is the electronic symbol for a speaker. This could well come up in the exam. Orthographic drawing. In the exam question in the past, question number four or five has often been about orthographic drawing. So you need to know, you need to make sure that you know the correct drawing conventions. For example, dimension lines. So we've got li dimension lines here, um, the arrows, the position of the dimensioning, and the dimensioning lines here. So you should know that. Orthographic drawing. You should also be um, aware of sectional drawings and be able to draw those or know how to draw those and read those and exploded diagrams. These are often they used to show the part position of parts relative to each other. So exploded diagrams are often supplied with products to enable consumers to identify and order parts. So you've got an exploded diagram there of some headphones and a sectional drawing. Okay, thanks very much for watching and very good luck in the exam.